folks. Just want to make sure this is recording. All right. Welcome to SCP. We're going to learn today the basics of making uh, a simple interactive game. And we're going to start with step one, which is kind of building, building uh, the architecture for a game where you can move um, a sprite across the screen using your keys on the keyboard. Um, the first thing we're going to do is grab an event. We're going to build an algorithm here. And our first algorithm is a movement algorithm. So when green flag clicks, we want to be able to move this uh, sprite around with our arrow keys. So normally, we're going to use some conditionals if, and then we're going to go to the uh, sensing menu up here and grab the key pressed key. And what we want to do is we want to be able to press one of the arrow keys, let's start with right arrow, and move the sprite across the screen. Now there are a lot of ways to move a sprite, including motion, like move 10 steps. And actually if I use this block, I can actually move my sprite across the screen. It's a very, very small amount. Using the move 10 steps, but we want to use the X and Y grid on the screen. So we're gonna do things like change X position. Um, and this is the basic algorithm for moving in one direction. What we want to do is copy this, so we've got left and right. And left arrow is going to be negative 10. And now we've got our left and right algorithms. If we place them inside of a, a forever loop, and we were to run that loop, the arrows on your keyboard should now be able to move your sprite back and forth. <clears throat> now, we also want to go up and down, so we want to duplicate this and have an up arrow, and you guessed it, we're, now we're going to be changing our Y coordinate instead of X, and we can duplicate that. Down arrow makes us go negative 10. Place that in the algorithm, place that in our event block, and now when we hit green flag, we can now move up, down, left, and right. Now, in this game, in this example, we're actually going to be switching the direction of our sprite because we want to be able to shoot a fireball um, in the direction that we're facing. So the direction is important because that's the direction the fireball then has to travel, and that's going to be its own sprite. So in order for that to happen, we're going to need to change our sprite's direction so that when we move around, if you notice my sprite does not change its direction. It's always facing to the right even though it's moving in different directions. We want to be able to change direction. So we can point in a direction, and if you look here, and if you do this down menu, it tells you 90 is left, um, 270, 270 is left, 90 is right, and it tells you, uh, you know, which way is which. So I could go point in 90 when I hit right arrow. I could do point in direction, you know, left, when I hit left arrow. I'm going to use one of those for each of the directions. I've got an up, and I'm going to have a down. Easy enough, right? This is up, this is down. And now, when we move our sprite around, you can see that, well, I've got something wrong. My down arrow is not quite right. There we go. There's always a little bug somewhere. There, now it's working. So in just a few minutes, uh, just literally in less than four minutes, we've already got a sprite moving around the screen uh, following our arrow keys. Now, how can we get this sprite to um, you know, shoot out a little fireball? Well, we need a new sprite. First, it's always good to name our sprites. So we can call this player one. Let's make a new sprite. This is going to be fireball. And this sprite is also going to need a green flag. And this is the sort of fireball that we are going to shoot out when we press a certain key. Now, for that to happen, we want to hide the sprite when we, when we hit green flag, because we don't want it to be on the screen at all. And we only want it to show at certain times. And we're going to want it to uh, probably do a repeat until uh, we hit the edge of the screen or something else happens. We'll code that in later, but what's going to happen is player one over here is going to press a key, so we'll need another if conditional, 
we'll need another key and I'll do spacebar for now you can change that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna broadcast a message to our fireball we're going to um, where is it broadcast here we go we're gonna broadcast a new message called fire and that goes in the forever loop as well so now whenever we press spacebar we broadcast the invisible message called fire which does nothing but if we go to fireball we can say up here there should be an event when I receive fire we want to go to wherever player one is go to player one and then repeat until I usually do touching edge that means it's gonna keep happening until we touch the edge we want to we we'll want to show before that show up repeat until touching edge and then you can do something like you know change X move or something like that but wa watch what we do so change X by 10 for example watch this green flag moving my player around and I press spacebar and I'm now firing that sprite out you can see every time I press spacebar it's activating the code for fireball but there's a problem watch this I'm facing other directions and I'm still only firing to the right that's because I've got change X by 10 in here and that's all I have how can we tell this sprite to face in the same direction as our sprite the problem is if I'm facing to the right it's fine if I'm facing to the left we need to be a, we need there to be a way to check which way am I facing and then tell fireball that's the way we're facing and then tell fireball to move that way instead of just change by X so that's where variables come in again we need a variable for our direction so I'm gonna go to variables I make a variable called uh, player one dir that's like player one's direction okay I'm gonna hit that here we can leave this up here for now I'll probably get rid of it because we don't it's the type of thing we don't want just up here in the game but um, we're going to set player one dir to and then look you can take player one's direction which will always update and put it here so no matter which way we're facing player one dir will always be set to that direction watch this if we make that something that happens forever and I hit green flag. Look at player one dir up here, 270. Now that's left. But as soon as I move to the right, player one dir changes to 90, which is right. Like literally uh, right, facing the right way. Down, 180, up, zero. So we can see that variable is now updating which direction we're facing. So if that's the case, we can now tell fireball to um, when we receive fire go to player we can say point in direction grab the variable player one dir so that we're facing in the direction we're supposed to be and now instead of change X by 10 I think let's test this out we can do move 10 steps let's see if that works now I'm shooting a fireball even though it looks like a turtle arrow and it's not that cool now I've got it moving in the direction that I'm facing in so we have a game already that's interactive I can use my arrow keys to move myself around and when I press space bar I am firing out a fireball which is just another sprite and you can see the direction updates as I move which is cool so we've used variables conditionals and broadcasted messages we've used events we've created two different algorithms one for uh, player one one for the fireball and then watch this this is a cool thing I like to do here's some abstraction I can let's do this at the very end just to make this tidy let's make a block called player one motion we'll make it a motion block a command we'll hit OK and in this block we are going to place all our conditionals that have to do with motion right arrow left arrow up arrow down arrow we can place that in here we've now abstracted all of our movement hit apply okay 
And now player one motion can go into our forever loop for player one. Let's test it. It works. Our code is cleaner. We've abstracted player one motion into its own block that has all of the conditionals. We don't need to put it in a forever loop in here because it sits in a forever loop out here. So now we've used abstraction to create this algorithm. We've created a message. We've created a variable. And we've done a lot of complex stuff in only about 10 minutes of time. And we have a game, a game template set up. Now my character design is zero because it's just turtle arrows. Uh, and my storyline is zero and there's no purpose to this game right now. But we have some architecture that's basic and we've got it working and we can move on from here. So just as an example for building a game, we're gonna build this today. You can replay this video, follow along, but let's have try to have these two sprites and these algorithms. Let me throw away this stuff that we don't need. I can clean my code up here. Two different events, two different algorithms, and we're looking good. All right, I'm gonna save this.